In this series, let us learn about various aspects of pons. It's the middle or the intermediate part of the brainstem, situated rostral to the medulla and caudal to the midbrain. Pons literally means a bridge, as it bridges the medulla with the midbrain vertically and through its fibers of the middle cerebellar peduncle, it bridges the two cerebellar hemispheres transversely. Pons develops from the metencephalon part of the hindbrain vesicle. In this video, let us begin with learning about the external features of the pons. As it is situated superior to the medulla, pons is located in the more rostral part of the posterior cranial fossa. The grey matter of the pons include pontine nuclei situated within the basilar part and nuclei of the middle four cranial nerves, nuclei of the auditory pathways and nuclei of the reticular formation in the tegmental part. White matter includes various ascending and descending tracts which are transiting, beginning of the trigeminal and lateral lemniscae and the three cerebellar peduncles. Pons extends from pontomedullary junction below to the cerebral, cerebral peduncles above. Its ventral surface is related to clivus which is separated by the meninges and the cisterna pontus. The ventral surface shows a midline shallow sulcus known as basilar sulcus and this sulcus lodges the basilar artery. On either side of the sulcus there is surface elevation which is caused due to the underlying corticospinal tract fibers. The ventral surface also shows horizontally running bundles of fibers. They belong to the corticoponto cerebellar tract. These fibers arise from the underlying pontine nuclei. They run to the contralateral side bridging the midline and they collect on either side to form the middle cerebellar peduncles. From the ventral surface, the fifth cranial nerve or the trigeminal nerve exits roughly at the mid-level of the pons. It has a small medial motor root and a larger lateral sensory root. Site of attachment of this trigeminal nerve demarcates the pons medially from the middle cerebral, cerebellar peduncles laterally. The lower lateral area demarcated by this red dotted line is known as the cerebellopontine angle. Here, the facial nerve exits with its nervous intermediate component and the vestibular no cochlear nerve at the pontomedullary junction. Upper rootlets of the glossopharyngeal nerve exit along the dorsolateral sulcus and there is granular choroid plexus of the fourth ventricle protruding through the foramen of Lushka into the subarachnoid space. Tumors at the cerebellopontine angle have a distinct presentation due to these structures. We shall discuss that at a later stage. Coming to the dorsal relations, immediately posterior to the pons, there is cavity of the fourth ventricle so that the posterior surface of the pons forms the floor of this cavity. Further dorsally, the superior medullary velum, which is a thin sheet of white matter, forms the roof of the fourth ventricle. Now this cavity of the fourth ventricle separates the pons from the cerebellum. Let us now see the features on the dorsal surface of the pons. Dorsal surface of the pons is triangular, contributing to the upper half of the diamond-shaped rhomboid fossa or the floor of the fourth ventricle. Transversely running fibers of the stria medullaris separate the pons from the medulla below. There is a median sulcus which divides the area into right and left halves. On either side of the median sulcus, there is a faint sulcus limitans which divides each half into a medial eminence medially and a vestibular area laterally as we had already seen this in relation to medulla. In case of pons, the medial eminence is represented by facial colliculus 
which is an elevation caused by the facial nerve fibers winding around the abducens nucleus and the vestibular area in the pons region is related to medial lateral and superior vestibular nuclei sulcus limitans ends superiorly in a shallow superior fovea which shows presence of a bluish gray discolored area known as locus ceruleus because of the underlying nucleus ceruleus laterally this posterior surface is bounded by the superior cerebellar peduncles and the superior cerebellar peduncles are flanked on either side by the inferior and the middle cerebellar peduncles at the pontomedullary junction so with this insight about the external features of the pons let us now move on to consider the internal architecture of pons in our next videos thank you you can visit the site for other neuroanatomy videos thank you